question five. Um, really interesting, eight marks, two parts. You've got a lovely graph. The graph shows the pair of y equals e to 3x minus 6 e to 2x plus 32. Find the x-coordinate of the minimum point and verify that the y-coordinate of the minimum point is zero. Okay, so straight in there, uh, as soon as it says x-coordinate of the minimum point, we know, because we've done so much of this, that we're interested in dy by dx being zero. That's when we would have the minimum point. So, let's differentiate it. dy by dx, one of these exponential differentiation things, e to the 3x, we know goes to 3 e to the 3x. e to the 2x goes to 2 e to the 2x, but it's times by minus 6, so that's minus 12 e to the 2x. And of course, 32 differentiates to 0. So that's what dy by dx the is. There we go, that's a good start. Um, we want to find the x coordinate of the minimum point, so we want to know when this is 0. So if dy by dx is 0, 3e to the 3x minus 12e to the 2x equals 0. Now, this is an interesting bit, because we've got to be careful how we solve these kind of equations, haven't we? Because we know we can't just dive straight in and do, put natural log in front of these. Because if we put natural log in front of everything, well, it, we can't do it at this, at this point. It's not actually mathematically possible to take natural logs of everything here. To start with, this isn't correct. It's not correct to write this on the left hand side. And if you're taking natural log of both sides, you'd be writing this on the right hand side. And we can't do that, can we? Ln of 0 isn't defined. We can't find the natural log. Of zero. So, so there's a big issue there, we can't do that straight away. Um, one of the interesting things about it is if, if you do that and kind of blunt around a little bit, there is a chance that you end up with the correct value of x from that. But as soon as you've done this, you can't get that value of x because you've made a mistake, you've done something wrong. So we need to work out how we can solve this equation first. We're gonna, I think we're going to try and, uh, well, what could we do? We could factorise it, couldn't we? Um, have a look at that, or we could, what's the easiest way to do with this? Um, let's, well, let's divide by 3 to start with, so we, we get that. That, that chair's not a good chair, is it? But it, it, the people on this video, my mind, they look at Right. Let's divide by 3, so we've got e to the 3x. Minus 4 e to the 2x is 0. That seems like a sensible thing to do. Um, we're going to take out a common factor. Let's take out a common factor of e to the 2x. e to the 2x times e to the x minus 4 is 0. That seems like a nice way of doing it, doesn't it? Because e to the 2x can be e to the 3x, and that would give us 4 e to the 2x. Now, of course, e to the 2x can't be 0. Because we know that e to the anything can't give us an answer of 0. e to the 2x is not equal to 0. Therefore, e to the x must be equal to 4. If e to the x is equal to 4, that means x is the natural log of 4. And that's our x value. There are other ways we could solve that. But you must arrive at ln4 in a sensible manner. Okay? It must be mathematically correct to get to it. You're not allowed to get to it from wrong working from it non-legitimate method. Uh, we've not quite finished, it said to verify that the y coordinate of the minimum point is zero. Now, I, this is a tough mark, I reckon, because to do that, of course, we now need to sub in ln4 into the equation. And I, you know, I did this back in June, um, straight after the students had done it, I got the paper and had a go at it myself. And what was that? Is that? Am I doing this right? And I, I think, if I were rushing through this, if I were feeling short of time, I might say, there we are, write that. I'd type into my calculator, my calculator would say zero, I'd write zero, I'd move on to the next bit. Okay, there we go. I've not got the mark at this point. That wouldn't be enough. 
We've got to be, you've got to make sure that when a question is wanting you to show something, verify something, you've got to actually be absolutely clear that you've verified it because it's, it's not enough just to type it into the calculator and say, yeah, I've checked it. Because the person marking it doesn't know that you checked it. So we needed to see another line of working here where you actually evaluate some of these individual expressions. So e to the 3 ln 4, well, I'll do it in two lines, but that's e to the ln 4 cubed, minus 6 e to the ln 4 squared, plus 32, so that is 64, e to the ln 6 squared, 64, um, minus 6 times 16, plus 32. Now, that line there, that's enough. That line would get you it. Um, that line is 64 minus 96, isn't it? Plus 32, and that is here. I've, I've done more than was necessary there. But at least that line has to be in it. You have to actually evaluate that to that level in order to get them all. It's quite a harsh little one mark at the end of it. So, we go on to part two. Find the exact area of the region shaded in the diagram. Well, this is now obviously this is integration, and we're integrating between zero and between this value here. Okay. Now there was a, a little thing about the way that this was marked as well, that in order to do that, the limit of LM4, you could only get four marks on this if you'd arrived at the limit of LM4 legitimately. So if your method had been dodgy in here, but you'd still got LN4, the most you could get was 3 out of 4 on the second part, because you'd kind of flute your way to the LN4 upper limit. So we're doing the integral, the integral of part B, uh, part 2, sorry, is the integral from 0 to LN4 of that expression, which was e to the 3, uh, what was it? What was doing there? E to the three x was that right? Yes. Minus six e to the two x plus thirty two. The x. Now remember, we conveniently got rid of the thirty two in the first part because we were differentiating. But of course, we're integrating now, so the thirty two would matter if we integrate e to the three x. We get a third e to the three x. Integrate 6 e to the 2x, well e to the 2x is a half, so this is minus 3 e to the 2x, plus 32x, we've got to have that 32x in there. Now we're going to carefully put the limits in, we've got 1 third e to the 3 ln 4, minus 3 e to the 2 ln 4, plus 32 ln 4, take away, and I know some people have made this mistake, that there's a temptation, isn't it, to see zero as the lower bound and just think, oh, that makes everything zero. Zero does, but it doesn't, does it? We've got a third e to the zero minus three to the zero plus 32 times zero, so that does give zero. So um, it did say exact what we, we've just done some of this calculation here. We've got e to the 3 ln 4, which is e to the ln 64. So that's a third of 64, 3e to the L and then 16, so that's minus 3 times 16, plus 32 and then 4, take away, and here we've got a third to take away 3, because e to the 0 is 1, and a third to take away 3 is minus 8 ninths, minus 8 thirds, good recovery. Um, and then we put that together, so 64 over 3, do I have to do this? Yes, okay, 64 over 3, we're adding 8 over 3 to that, so that's 72 over 3, 72 over 3 is an amount, kind of like 20 something, what is it, 24, good one, well okay. uh, take away, 3 lots of 16, so 24, take away 48, so that's minus 24, plus 32 and 4, and I think it didn't really specify, did it, a, a way that we had to give it, I'm going to leave it like that, 
It didn't give a particular form, but it did say give it exact. So there we go, there's our exact plugin. That, that was one of the more difficult ones I would have thought. Lots of places to make a mistake. That's maths. <laughs>